Uh, hi everybody, uh, Physics Ninja here. Today we're gonna do a work energy theorem problem. Here's the problem. Uh, we have a block that starts at the top of a ramp here as shown. Uh, the ramp has a height of four meters, uh, sorry, five meters rather. It starts from rest, so its initial velocity is zero. Um, and then it slides down the ramp. The angle with uh, the horizontal is 20 degrees. And once it's done sliding off that ramp, it hits a flat section of the road. Now in that flat section, the coefficient of friction is different from the ramp. Okay, so you're gonna slide a certain distance. Now, we're not gonna make the block go all the way to rest. We're gonna observe the block that after it slides a certain distance D, uh, the speed of the block is 0.15 meters per second. Given all this information, how would you find what is this distance D on the flat section that you slide? Okay, this is kind of a really good standard work energy theorem problem. So we're gonna write the work energy theorem, find all the forces, find the work done by all the forces, and then solve for the unknowns. Okay, so give this problem a try, and then watch the rest of the video. See if you got the right answer. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support me. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what we do is we write down the work energy theorem. It says the net work um, must be equal to the change of kinetic energy. All right, and the change of kinetic energy is always a final kinetic energy minus an initial kinetic energy. Uh, right away, we have a simplification. It started from rest. Therefore, there is no kinetic energy because of this guy right here, okay? So uh, next thing we do is, well, we can write down... Uh, what is this final kinetic energy? It's one half the mass of the block and the final velocity squared. Okay, so I don't know the mass, right? It's not given in this problem. So guess what? It must be that the mass cancels out. But it must mean that we have to still calculate the left-hand side here of this work energy theorem. So how do we do this? So we have to consider the work done over this entire trajectory over here. So not only the ramp, but we also have to consider this flat section. So how do you write the work? Well, uh, what you could do is you could break it down by only looking at the ramp and then looking at the flat section. Uh, that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right. So for the ramp part, I'm going to write it over here. And then for the flat section, I'm going to do it over here. And all of this must be equal to 1 half mv final squared. All right, on the ramp, again, we should consider the forces acting on the block. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the block here. And let's draw some of those forces. So what do we have? We've got the weight acting down. We have mg acting down. We have, um, what else? We're going to have friction. So we have a force of friction that's acting opposite of the motion. Okay, so that's force of friction. I'll just call it 1 because it has a coefficient of friction over there that is a 1. Uh, what else? Well, now we also have a normal force, okay? And then that's it. These are all the forces that are acting on the block on the ramp part. Now, when you're on that flat section, guess what? It's a lot easier, right? Because you have the weight acting down. We're going to have uh, the normal force. Again, I'm going to call this one N1 and N2. Those are going to be different when you're on the ramp versus when you're on the flat section. And also, look what we have over here. We have a different coefficient of friction during the road part, it's made of a different material. In this case, we have 0.25 for the coefficient of kinetic friction. All right, so now we have to look at the ramp. So let me go ahead and um, just highlight this. Or how do we calculate the work done? Well, let's go ahead and just write out all the terms. So on the ramp, I'm going to have to do what is the work done by the weight. I'll just call it work done by little g plus what is the work done by the normal N1 plus what is the work done by this coefficient or sorry, by the force of friction? I have three forces. I have three terms. We'll simplify them in a minute. Now, what about the flat section plus the work done by, again, I'll just say the weight, okay, in the flat section. Um, call it two and I'll put a little one <laughs> over here. Um, plus uh, the work done by the normal N2. And again, plus the work done by this other force of friction, which is uh, FK2. Now we're going to take out the red because some of these terms simplify quite a bit. Uh, the normal force, this one doesn't do any work. This one doesn't do any work because these forces are always perpendicular to the displacement, 
right? When you're on the ramp, the displacement is like this, and the normal force is perpendicular. So those forces never do work. Okay, what else? On the flat section over here, look what we have. We've got the gravity that's acting down, and I have my displacement, which is going to be in that direction, right, to the right. Therefore, during the flat section, this guy also doesn't do any work. So all we're left with now are three terms. It's the work done by gravity when you're sliding down the ramp and the work done by the force of friction. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to calculate what is this distance over here? How far am I sliding down the ramp? And for that, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little trigonometry because we only know the height and we know the angle. But I want to know what is this total distance here? I'm going to call this D1. Now, if you do some trigonometry, you should be able to show that, well, we have sine of theta, okay, should be equal to the height, which I'm given, which is 5, over the hypotenuse, which is going to be D1. All right, so right away, you could write that that distance D1 is the height divided by sine of the angle theta. All right, so the first term I'm going to evaluate is this guy, the work done by gravity when it's on the ramp. Um, in order to do that, what I'm going to first do is break this force down, the weight, into two components. We have the weight perpendicular to the ramp and the weight parallel to the ramp. Now we should note, it, uh, note that the work done by the perpendicular component should be zero because it's perpendicular to the ramp. Those forces don't do any work. Now this component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp is equal to mg sine of theta. All right, This you should know the block on a slope at this point. Um, okay, so how do we calculate this work term? Well, the work term is what? It has to be um, the magnitude of the force, so we have mg sine of that angle, multiplied by the displacement, or the displacement here is going to be this distance d1, okay? Plus, now we're here, the work done by the force of kinetic friction. Well, that is going to be the force of kinetic friction on the ramp, multiplied by the distance, again, the distance is D1, multiplied by cos of the angle between that force and the displacement. Here we are going to have cos of 180 degrees. Remember, cos of 180 degrees is minus one. All right, plus, now we have to worry about the work done by friction during this flat section. So it looks similar to the one we just did, except the force of friction is different, the coefficient is different, multiplied by a different distance, which is D, the unknown that we're looking for. And again, it's multiplied by cosine of 180. Again, this here is minus 1. That here must be equal to this final kinetic energy right here. So what we're going to do here is simplify this expression a little bit. The other thing I can do is this distance D1, well, guess what? I have an expression for it right here. We can go ahead and substitute that inside. So this is what it looks like now. We have mg. Now look at, I have sine theta here, but in the definition of d1, I also have sine theta. Those cancel out, so you're left with simply mgh. Now this term here is going to be minus. Now what is the um, kinetic uh, friction force on the ramp, okay? So let's think about this for a minute, looking at this free body diagram. The force of kinetic friction is always the coefficient of friction, which is one, uh, mu one, multiplied by the normal force, which is n one. All right, the force of kinetic friction on the flat section is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu two, multiplied by the normal, n two. Now the normals are different, right? Remember, on the flat section, it's easy. It's simply mg, right? Because the forces have to cancel out in this vertical direction. How about now on the ramp? So you should know the block on a ramp. And the normal force here must balance out this perpendicular component of the weight. That is mg cosine of the angle theta. All right, we're now in a position to substitute everything here in our expression. So I have the negative one here that comes from cos of 180. The force of kinetic friction now is mu1, the mass, uh, the little g, the distance d1, okay, and what else? Oh, I still had cos of the angle theta. Well, let me go ahead and just insert that before. So cos of the angle 
theta multiplied by d1. Okay, that is my term for the work done by the force of friction during the ramp. Now look at the next term. The next term now becomes minus because of the cos of 180 that came in from the definition of work. I substitute now the force of kinetic friction, which is mu2 multiplied by mg. And now I still have to multiply by this distance. And now this must be equal to 1 half mv final squared. Look what we have. Every term here involves the mass. Therefore, you could eliminate the mass. No need for it. Uh, you could simply divide through by the mass. All we have to do now is I'm going to group some terms. I am looking for one unknown. And look where it is. The only unknown in this expression is d. So we have to just be a little bit careful here with the algebra. Uh, but this should be pretty straightforward to do. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through by little g everywhere. Um, and that what that is going to do is I'm going to simplify some of these terms. So little g is here, little g is here, little g is here. If I divide through by little g, I also need to include a little g over here. Now I'm getting to my expression here. I think now I can simply bring this term to the other side, to the right-hand side that involves d and then bring this term over here with the velocity final square to the left-hand side, and I'll get one final expression. And now you've got to be a little bit careful, but this is what it looks like. So I'm going to get h minus mu1 uh, cosine of the angle theta multiplied by d1. And now when I bring the uh, velocity final squared term over here to the left-hand side, I get this. And now this here must be equal to everything that's left over here. That's mu2 multiplied by d. But I just want to have d by itself. So all I'm going to do then is divide through by mu2. Wow, what a complicated looking expression. But it's okay. I know all the terms here. Well, if you think about all the things I gave you in that problem, I gave you the height, mu1, angle theta, d1, final velocity, little g we know, and mu2 we also know. Now we're going to substitute everything in the calculator and get to a final answer. All right, so we have our expression here for d. If you look at it, it makes a lot of sense, right? What would make d big? Well, first of all, if you make the height very, very big, then uh, that would help d. Uh, first of all, also look, <laughs> what if I make this coefficient of friction here? What if I make this very small? You'd expect the distance to be very big for that block. And that's what you get, right? The more I make mu2 here small, um, the farther the distance is going to be. So that makes sense. Uh, what else? Well, I mean, you could check some other limits with this expression, but it all kind of checks out to me. So we're at the point now where we can substitute things. Now I still have to calculate what is this distance d1, but we know that you can substitute the height is 5 sine of 20 degrees in that expression. You get 14.6 meters is the distance of this ramp. Uh, next thing you do now, we substitute in all the numbers. So you get 5 minus 0 0.1 cos of 20. 14.6 for d1, and then we have this term here for the kinetic energy, or the, well, that has the final velocity in it, so 1 half 0 0.15 squared over 9.8, and at the end you divide everything by the coefficient of friction, uh, mu2, which is 0 0.25. Get that in the calculator, and my final result was 14.5 meters. Now, it's interesting that it came out to be very, very similar to what the distance of the ramp is. Again, that just depends on some of the values that we picked uh, for the coefficient of friction and the angles. Um, but anyway, this is it. This is kind of a good work energy theorem problem. Make sure you understand this one. Uh, note the differences between the work done on the ramp and the work done during the flat section. Um, kind of a good overall problem. All right, we'll see you next time.